The following is part three of a four-part series on developing weather-ready schools, produced by the National Weather Service, Chicago. In this video, we will cover how to practice sheltering procedures, monitor current weather conditions, and put it all together by acting when severe weather strikes. Practicing begins by training all staff on hazardous weather procedures. In-service sessions and staff meetings offer great opportunities for training staff on the severe weather strategy. Sending an email or newsletter to staff when severe weather is in the forecast allows for a quick and easy refresher. Conducting sheltering drills with students is another key factor in practicing. We recommend that schools hold at least two sheltering drills each school year, once in the fall and then once in the spring during severe weather awareness week. Drills should be conducted at inconvenient times and when disasters are most likely to occur. In the Chicago region, most significant tornadoes occur between the hours of noon and 7 p.m., but can and have occurred at any time, day or night. March through September is when tornadoes occur the most frequent, but again, they can and have occurred in any month. Monitoring the forecast and current weather conditions is the next piece of our hazardous weather preparedness model. The weather watcher should use more than one source when monitoring the weather. But first, one should know what to look for when monitoring. This begins with designating decision thresholds. Some decision thresholds will be the same across the board, from school district to school district. Others will not. To learn more about decision thresholds, please see our complete hazardous weather preparedness manual. We have also developed a training video on how to easily navigate our webpage and hazardous weather briefings. Many people find it hard to distinguish the difference between a watch and a warning. A watch is issued when the potential exists for the development of a given hazard. During a watch, you can continue to go about your daily activities, but continue to monitor the changing weather conditions. A warning is issued when the given hazard is occurring or is imminent. During a severe thunderstorm or tornado warning, you should move to shelter immediately. The best way to monitor severe weather is through a NOAA weather radio. A NOAA weather radio is the smoke detector of severe weather. Weather radios will alert you as soon as a warning is issued for your program county. We recommend that schools get portable weather radios so the decision maker or weather watcher can take the radio to shelter with them and continue to monitor the weather from a safe location. Portable radios also allow weather watchers to take them outside to track meets, baseball games, and other extracurricular activities. Another way to monitor and disseminate information is through emergency alert systems. Wireless emergency alerts are emergency text-like messages sent to cell phones based on user location. The National Weather Service sends wireless emergency alerts if a tornado or flash flood warning is issued. Many school districts are also installing their own emergency alert systems. These systems will display emergency messages on all computer screens and send alerts via text or email to staff, students, and parents. In addition, lives are being saved with the installation of lightning detection systems at many athletic fields around the country. Monitoring the weather can also involve outdoor sirens. However, we cannot stress this enough. Outdoor tornado sirens should not be relied upon as a sole source alerting you of a tornado warning. Tornado sirens are not meant to be heard indoors, and each municipality and county has their own protocol for sounding the sirens. When a siren turns off, it does not necessarily mean the danger has passed. And last, but certainly not least, is ACT. Acting when severe weather strikes is extremely important. Your school can have the best plan, greatest practicing procedure, and an expert weather watcher who monitors the weather carefully. But failing to act when hazardous weather is approaching or when a warning is issued would be like failing to evacuate during a fire, even though you know the fire drill forwards and backwards. Acting is the final piece of the hazardous weather preparedness model and will fit perfectly once the other three pieces are set in place.
Thank you for watching, and this concludes part three of our Weather Ready Schools series.